What's up you guys? This is Donna. I am back with another video for you guys. So you guys, I'm really excited. This is my first ever PA Q&A video. I'm going to do this every Tuesday. It's going to be PA Q&A Tuesday. PA Q&A Tuesday. I like that. So that's what we're going to be doing um, every Tuesday. I'm going to be putting this video out for you guys. But I just wanted to kind of intro it for you all on this Sunday. But I'm still going to also do just my PA related videos on Sunday as well. So don't fear those are not going anywhere. If you have any questions that you want me to answer on the next video, go ahead and leave that in the comment section right now so that I can choose from those comments to answer on the next video. Okay? All right, let's do it. Is it hard to get a stable or permanent job as a PA? So um, from my understanding, no, it's not difficult at all, um, especially with so many different urgent cares and like primary care offices popping up. And then also, um, you know, kind of like the baby boomer physicians kind of leaving the profession and retiring, it's becoming a lot easier to get a position as a PA. Now, if you want to stay in that position or like usually it's like you're coming out, you're either like an ER PA or a primary care PA. If you want to stay in that particular field, great, by all means do that. But when you start trying to get into like the specialty fields, that's when it gets a little bit more competitive and a little bit more difficult. But it's definitely not hard at all to get a job as a PA and also um, have that be a permanent position for you. You just have to love what you do. So um, go for it, whatever it is you're thinking of. But you can always start out at an urgent care. Do PAs perform surgery? Yes, in a sense, right? So we first assist. So as a PA student, when I go on my rotations in a couple of months, so excited about that. But um, yes, we will be able to first assist. You're not heading up the surgery. You're not sitting here directing everything, but you're first assisting the surgeon with his surgery or her surgery. So you do perform surgery, but you have to be a surgical PA to do so, or like a cardiothoracic. PA to do so. So it's all in, in the realm of scope of your particular um, practice, I guess you can say. You know, like an ER PA isn't going to be performing surgery on an everyday basis, uh, if at all. You know, maybe in like super, super like very high intense cases where like it's imperative that something is opened or you know we, we get in and we're able to see what's happening with the body um maybe but on a typical day no you're not performing surgery so if surgery is not your thing you're in you're in a good profession because you don't have to stay in the surgical pa realm you can be a dermatology pa you can be family practice you can be pediatrics there's the horizon and and the landscape is wide open for you so no worries there. What would you recommend going into nursing school, then joining PA, or just going into nurse practitioner? So I did a video kind of on this in a sense. Um, it's just talking about like the best profession or the best bachelor's degree for the PA profession. Now I am a proponent of like anything science related. So if your passion is to be a PA, then go ahead and if you want to go to a nursing degree and get your clinical hours there and get that experience there and then become a PA, do that. Um, just because you're on a nursing track doesn't mean you have to stay on that nursing track to now become a nurse practitioner. Because if it's in a field that you don't necessarily want to practice for the rest of your career, then it's not really a good option for you, right? So it's better for you to look at both professions. Which do you want to be? Do you want to be a nurse practitioner or do you want to be a PA? What kind of flexibility do you want in your future profession? And then make your decisions based on that. Honestly, it's just about looking at you and what is going to fit well in your life um, for your your lifestyle and then going from there because they'll both offer you pretty similar things, um, except the PA profession allows you to go into the hospital and do a lot more surgeries and different things like that if you subspecialize as like a surgical PA or an orthopedics PA. So it's all up to you and, and where you want to practice and how you want to practice, but 
by all means, if you want to go into nursing and get that clinical experience first before becoming a PA, do that. I kind of wish I did do that, honestly. I wish I had a little bit more experience with respect to like all of the different meds and how to give them and that aspect of nursing. I think the nursing profession does a really great job at teaching their future nurses like how to like manage meds and patients with respect to that. Um, and I wish I had that, but I'm getting it now in PA school um, through my farm class. Oh Lord, help me with that class. Um, but I'm getting it now and then I'll learn more as I get on rotation. So there's pros and cons to just going into whatever degree you want and then becoming a PA or going into the nursing um, bachelor's degree and then becoming a PA. But like I said, it's up to you. Can someone with bad grades become a PA? So, um, Yes and no, right? Um, it's kind of like a two-part question, I guess you can say. Let's kind of just look at it realistically, okay? So you cannot have a 2.0 GPA at the time of applying to PA school and get into PA school, okay? Well, I mean, nowadays. I know that there are some people that did that prior, but now it's a little bit more difficult. I know for the most part, they ask for a 2.5 at minimum. Some schools say a cumulative GPA of 2.0, but that's like the bare minimum. You have people with like 3.5s, 4.0s, 3.3s um, applying to the same program that you with your 2.0s applying. So it can get very, very competitive and it can get really, really difficult. So I wouldn't suggest you saying you or you think oh well I mean I can just kind of skate through my undergraduate degree and be okay with respect to applying to PA school because that's not how it works right they they kind of they want the best of the best and at the same time um, they want to know that you're going to be able to actually like complete the coursework and make it through the program because PA school is hard it's not easy it's very difficult um, it's doable but it's you have to have a work ethic and you have to move and, and go with it so yes somebody with bad grades can get into PA school if you bring those grades up right so if you had like a 2.5 and you work really really hard and you bring it up to like a 3.2 and you're they're able to see that on your transcript and through your coursework that's going to look really really good because it's going to be like oh you know he or she is motivated they're really really um motivated to become a pa um they want this and obviously they can do this because they did an excellent job in bringing their GPA up. So it's it's really, it's a fine line. I can't say yes or no one way or the other. It's kind of yes and no, uh, but hopefully you guys can understand that. You're not going to necessarily um, get an interview or get accepted with a very low GPA. However, if you work hard and you bring that GPA up, absolutely you can get into PA school. Actually a friend of mine, Samora, did a video on this in my True Life series. She had a 1 point, what was it? 1.0? 1.9 GPA? Like it was really really low and she is currently in PA school killing it. Um, so I'll leave a link for that uh, in this video so that you can check that video out. But she will talk to you about her journey through um, undergrad and getting into PA school and hopefully that can provide some motivation and just a little bit more clarity on the whole can you get into PA school with a low GPA. Alright so that was it you guys my first little Q&A for you guys with your questions. I hope you guys liked it. Um, I, I like this way. I like being able to just answer your questions like this instead of having to type and you know then all like my autocorrect and like spelling, spell check is off and stuff and I look like I'm stupid but I mean fingers you know not hitting the right things. I really like this so if you guys like this go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know you want to do more of these and I will see what I can do for you guys um, in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already done so go ahead and subscribe right now to my channel and follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA. Alright, I will talk to you.